Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sensor a video here today brings a brand new Photoshop tutorial how to create your very own cool. I don't call it like Chrome, Urban Chrome text effect. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna use, but you should be calling it. However, you guys kind of see these cool little text effects, of course, combined with other effects and stuff like that still, but it's like this really cool text effect that of course you see in like merch or like album covers or like Things of like that nature, which I think is a pretty cool little push that I want to, of course, give a little shot and just like give you guys the idea of how I would go ahead and make the actual Chrome text effect. So with that being said, we're starting off with this really cool kind of like step by step how to like to get the layer style correct in Photoshop. And then I'm going to move into, of course, you guys seeing me again and then finalizing it uh, with you guys and all that good stuff. So if you guys know already, the 24th, 2, 4, 24th is when my merch actually ends up dropping. You guys don't know it already. Here's a little picture of it, a little, little something, something of it. You can see it's, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fire. I hope you guys do end up enjoying it purchasing it next week friday so you guys will of course get another updated um update excuse me next video so with that being said i love you guys i hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today of course if you did leave a like and if you're new please subscribe and also leave a like all that good stuff and i'll tell you guys in a second enjoy the video all right guys so let's go ahead and set you guys up the layer style to create this cool modern chrome effect so first thing is first of course type your word of choice and of course in the font of your choice and just so you guys know the font itself does also make the actual effect so make sure it's like a really cool fun font then you guys want to double click on your actual text layer and open up your layer styles. First is actually bevel and emboss. You guys want to of course set up your settings to as followed. Being that your style is on inner bevel, your technique is on smooth, depth is set to 500, size is set to 15, soften at 5, angle at 90, altitude at 30. Then I want you guys to choose the preset with that cool little two matte ones for your gloss contour. For your highlight opacity, you guys can choose any color you guys would like to use, but please be sure to actually change your blend mode from whatever it is. If it's not already, linear dodge add on top and then multiply on the bottom. Then you guys can go to the next layer style and that's inner shadow. You guys want to make sure you set your actual color to a nice secondary or complementary color or just simply the color you use for your bevel and emboss highlight or a nice similar color that you guys use for your bevel highlights and just set that blend mode on normal. Following that, you want to make sure your angle is at 81, your distance is at 7, your choke is on 3, and your size is at 1. And of course, lastly, make sure your global light is turned off because we're going to do next is actually make a duplicate of your actual inner shadow again. If you guys are in the new Photoshop, so you guys can see the little plus button to the right of the inner shadow, you guys want to make a duplicate. And with that duplicate, you guys want to make sure you change your angle to the opposite side. So for me, that's going to be around 135 or so. This will pretty much give you guys a cool little highlight for both your actual sides and just adds a nice little glow to it. Then, of course, speaking of glow, you guys want to set up your inner glow, which is actually blend mode set on linear dodge add as well. And your opacity is set to 40%. Then you guys want to make sure your choke is set to zero, your technique is at softer, your source is on edge, and the actual size is at 13. Next, you guys want to make sure you guys add some satin for some more extra shadows with your blend mode set to multiply with a nice cool gray kind of tone color on it. Then you want to set your distance to three and your size to 49. Then once you guys are all done with that, you guys are pretty much done on the right hand side of your layer styles. I would highly advise you guys to choose new style for your actual, just to make sure you never have to do it again. And if you guys look on the top left, it says the word styles. And on the last one is going to be your most recent added style. In this case right here, if all these uh, effects and settings will actually be there for you guys once again. So next time you open up Photoshop, you just go to your styles, you click on the last one, it'll bring this up. And you guys never have to do it again. So just so you guys know, make sure you guys do that. All right, guys, now that you guys have the layer style all set and ready, good to go, I'm going to actually get inside Photoshop with you guys and I kind of give you guys a kind of idea how to finalize it, make it look really good, and uh, overall just kind of finish the entire thing. So what we still have here is exactly where we end up leaving off. So what I'm going to end up doing is on my right-hand side is I'm going to press Control-J on my keyboard to make a duplicate of our Chrome copy here. Now, I named this yellow and like left it there because this is just forever. If you ever need the copy, it's still there. Just make, always make duplicates, okay? So what I'm going to end up doing is my Chrome copy here. I'm going to right-click and convert it to a smart object. And with this smart object, the if you don't actually convert to a smart object, you will end up not being able to do the next step, by the way, just so you guys know. The next step will be using a gradient map. Now, with this gradient map, I'm going to change my gradient map to this tone right here. So I have these three gradient maps. It's basically different kind of levels of, like, I guess, the shadow levels. So for me, I'm using this one right here, which is kind of like the mid, like, I guess, the mid-tone between the, all, all three. You guys can, of course, save each one as you guys wish to, but for you guys to know, the, the one I'm using is this one right here. So the left-hand side, I'm using the gray hex code 1B1B1B, right? And then about, like, 25% of the way or 15% of, uh, of the way there, I'm using a second gray tone, which is seven across the entire board for the hex code. Then I'm going to press OK. Then almost halfway, but just not yet, we're going to be using a white. Okay, that's just basically F across the board. And then in the middle, we have the pink right here, and I have the X code FF4A9F. That's a weird hex code. Press OK. And on the far right hand side, we have a nice little gray, which is basically D4, D4, D4. 
right? And also you guys, uh, so you know, the midtones right here, these little midpoints, which is basically kind of high, like whether or not what's favoring what is all in the middle. So you have to worry about anything. Just make sure you guys kind of like find somewhere where my nodes are. You guys will basically have exactly the same, uh, uh, exactly the same gradient map that I have right here. So press okay. Now what I'm gonna actually do with this, I'm gonna right click my gradient map and I'm gonna use convert, uh, excuse me, create uh, clip mask, just like so. Now I'm gonna basically have this really nice clean gradient as and see exactly what it does. So if you guys didn't know already, the beginning color that you guys chose for your Chrome kind of like text base color doesn't quite matter unless you guys, of course, it really doesn't matter at all, period. Cause you're of course gonna be gonna gradient over it. What really matters is kind of like what highlights and stuff we did in like going toward it. So you can see the, the inner shadow, you can see the satin a little bit of, uh, as well, uh, the inner glow, all that stuff kind of like aiding to what this final result is when you put a gradient map on top of it. So when we have this, you guys are good to go, okay? So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna control click on the gradient map and our actual Chrome copy text. And I'm gonna press control J to make a copy of both of them. Now with this, I'm gonna go back into my first gradient map. I'm gonna go to the second node here. I'm gonna make this gray a little bit darker. This is also how you guys would make your chrome a little bit more darker as well. You can see this darker tone looks really, really good as well, but I just kind of found the end result being a little bit more kind of like middle tone um, looked better. But I'm gonna make this purpose of, uh, purposefully a little bit more darker. Press okay, press okay again. Now with this little layer mask here, you can see this little layer mask. Uh, what I, actually, before I do that, let's combine these two things together. So we have this new uh, gradient map, this new copy. I'm gonna combine them together by control clicking like this, control clicking on one. Hold control, click on the other one, and then press control E to merge it together. Now with this now merged together, I'm gonna use the layer mask right here, just like so. Now with this layer mask, I'm gonna click on the actual layer mask itself, and I'm gonna go into it. And I'm just gonna erase a few spots, just like so with a black soft brush. You can see my soft, or my, uh, my colors on black, and I'm also using a nice, simple, pretty big size, uh, zero hardness soft brush, right? So I'm gonna click in there and kind of click around, just to give it a little more depth. You guys can see exactly what's happening. And if you guys want to as well, you guys can click back on the original thumbnail. Make sure you guys do that. Go to filter, filter gallery, and then choose the uh, under artistic is plastic wrap. So I have my highlights on eight, my detail on nine, and my smoothness on 10. I'm gonna press okay. You can see it just adds a little bit more kind of like that chrome kind of cool, like plastic wrap feel to it, which looks pretty freaking good. I mean, chrome and plastic metal, don't worry, it looks good, okay? So now what I want you to also do is I make a duplicate of this original once again with uh, control clicking. Take it, I'm just gonna hold Alt and drag it above this layer right here. I'm gonna immediately combine these two layers together, right? Just like so, this is basically another copy, okay? Now with this copy, actually, I'm gonna go to Filter, Filter Gallery again and apply that same exact kind of plastic wrap highlights, all the same exact uh, numbers and stuff. But for this one, I'm gonna change my blender from Normal to Overlay. And this will just give it really, really harsh, just really nice, cool vibes to it. And again, you can just get in with your uh, little layer mask here, soft brush, kind of erase a few spots, and you get this really clean, just kind of like very aggressive chrome look when you guys look at it from a nice far distance. So now we have this right here. We can basically make a duplicate uh, and kind of like a secondary color, right? So for this, I'm gonna make a duplicate of both the original once again, right? I'm just gonna alt drag them, right? So there's another duplicate just like so. Now, just so you guys know, if you guys wanna make a duplicate of this Chrome text, the original Chrome text, um, I'm not going to, but I would recommend if you guys do mess up, do make a duplicate for, uh, for, for reasons being, because I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make sure I rasterize this layer. The reason being I'm rasterizing this layer is because this is now still the only smart layer that occurs, right? So if this was still a smart layer, whatever I change to this layer will also change to my original layer. So that's why I uh, made it a rasterized image so it no longer has any effect with the actual uh, smart object that I have on this bottom layer. So this bottom layer now, I'm gonna double click on this, right? And I'm gonna go into this and I'm gonna basically change my font to Arial. Everyone has this, no worries, okay? And I'm also gonna make sure it's the regular one. I just wanna make a nice, really skinny font. So whatever you can use whatever mixtures of fonts you guys want, but for this style and approach right here, I'm using a purposeful skinny font, okay? Then, before you actually exit and go back over here, you can see nothing actually changed if I just move this up. But if I go over here and press Control S or Save, right, it's saved. If I go back over, you guys will notice that it's now the skinny kind of font. I can bring this right back in the middle just like so. Then with this new duplicate over here, I'm just gonna go to where it says filter, liquefy, <laughs> excuse me. I'm just gonna basically liquefy it just to, uh, uh, in like weird ways, right? And like different sections as well. It doesn't really hurt what you end up doing, right? I'm gonna do the O, do the O over here. Just make a nice old liquefied version and press okay. And then what you guys will see, excuse me, is if you guys can see just, it looks a little bit messy in some places. So I'm gonna end up doing, I'm gonna use a layer mask just like so. My black brush. I'm gonna actually use a pretty hard hardness here. I'm gonna get into this and basically erase the parts that I just think do not make any sense whatsoever. So that's basically this right here. I think 
this is a little awkward that's okay but i'll just you know i'll kind of get rid of this i think this whole bit right here is a little bit awkward as well i think the o is pretty good the m is a little awkward erase this as well and then the e is not that awkward on the left or not that awkward on the top but like pretty awkward on the right or on the bottom right so i'm erasing where it basically just kind of don't feel it also realistically that's just got to go okay right i think less is more in this case so realistically the e just we're just gonna erase it too okay but for this one here since we also made a duplicate of this gradient right here as well we're gonna go back into the gradient and we're just gonna change the actual pink to a nice secondary color for me it's gonna be nice and blue blue and with this one take it right about here hex code is 38a bf see if you guys want to copy the same exact blue that i have press okay press okay again and as you guys can see it's looking pretty freaking dope but what i, I want to end up doing okay is i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna use a nice little layer a new layer and with this new layer i'm gonna go ahead and just choose this pink right right with this new layer i'm gonna go ahead and choose this pink but i'm also gonna make it a little bit more darker then i'm gonna make sure i use a nice zero harness brush which just means of course zero harness or soft brush okay now with this i'm gonna click hover over make sure it's not too big of a brush but i'm gonna click only on the pink i think it's still too big click only on the pink and i'm gonna change my blend mode from normal to linear dodge add and just make it the pink just kind of like glow and with this just get into here in a few spots right just make it glow in a few spots make it glow here make it go here you can also do the same thing with blue but i'm not gonna do with the blue but just so you guys know you can do whatever the heck you guys want at this point this is kind of like already done but we're just kind of like finalizing the way i would finalize it right just like so a little pink there a little pink here all right that looks pretty freaking good now i'm gonna make another new layer but for the blue this time i'm gonna go ahead and just use a blue a darker blue again then zoom out a little bit nice bigger brush size click 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 in a few spots linear dodge add again lower my opacity down as well and we're gonna go ahead and take our nice uh, eraser this time but a soft brush eraser and just click in a few spots just to give it a nice kind of like neutral flat look right in the middle i think it's starting to look pretty dope i'm also going to add this texture that i have saved already right this texture is i actually made it you just literally take a picture of like plastic and then change this right here so i double click on this if you guys didn't know holding alt and clicking where it says this layer underlying layer is how you actually blend a little bit more better and a little more easier in my opinion so if i just take alt and if you guys connect it usually if i take alt and move it to the left click one move it to the left you guys it's kind of like more controlled blending mode and it's pretty much what i did and i can do the same exact thing for this change it over here no we're fine there we're fine there press okay that's looking pretty freaking good to be honest okay and i think what i also do is i'm gonna go ahead and make another new layer i'm gonna use a white color for a second for my foreground color I'm going to click once, click again, and I'm going to actually change my blend from normal to uh, dissolve. Okay, now with the dissolve, I'm going to lower my opacity about 3%. Let's go to 3. And then I'm going to take my eraser, nice soft brush eraser, pretty big as well. I'm just going to click inside of my dissolve and basically get to a point where it's like just literally not that much, but like just a, these little twinkles a little bit look pretty freaking good. Okay. Okay. I'm starting to like this a lot. Okay. I mean, pretty much. Low key, we're like kind of done. I want to do that one thing with the background as well. So I'm gonna make a duplicate of everything. So I can just also press, I don't know how to do that. I have to press control, alt, shift, and E. Then I'll go to filter, noise, add noise, and we'll add a, like a 4% noise with uniform, press okay. Give this a really clean kind of like, again, like urban kind of style you like see one, like you see on sometimes like, uh, like streetwear merch or kind of like cool little album covers. It's like the idea that I had about this. And uh, really, if you put anything in the background as well, I'm just kind of leaving the text effect being as it is. But this effect looks super freaking dope if I just put like Chrome, right? Watch this. Watch what happens if I just do Chrome, 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 right? These little kind of like little things. You can start seeing what kind of what ends up being built. It's this really cool, like just again, fun style of just like design overall you just kind of design with this around this with this whatever i think it's a super freaking dope tech effect and i am once again pretty much done if you want to add like flares literally like anything the world is yours at this point the tech effect is pretty much done and i would like for you guys of course get into it yourself also i guess in a way i'm gonna add a little bit of brightness and contrast i think that's what's like missing here like brightness and contrast a little bit nice contrast even some vibrance as well like you know what i mean like it's it's freaking dope. So if you guys end up enjoying today's video here today, you don't forget to leave a like. And of course, if you guys have any cool like ideas of like, we have to see you anywhere, wherever, wherever you end up seeing it, if you guys can name it, like a cool way for me to like explain it, you wanna put it in the comments section below for me to actually end up doing it in the future, please go to do so. 
And uh, if you guys want to also check out any of my other text effect tutorials, they're also all still on my channel. And I think there's a playlist. If not, I will make a playlist. But if there isn't, it should be like located like right over there somewhere. Okay. So with that being said, the 24th is the Seso HQ Real Designer Hour merch launch. It's coming with hoodies, long sleeves. Not wearing it right now, but you guys, I've basically been wearing it every whatever, every single day. So. With that being said, I love you guys so very much. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. If you've not subscribed already, you might as well just do it because we're going to have a really good time together. So, with that being said, love you guys. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Monday, your Tuesday, your Wednesday, your Thursday, and your Friday, and your Saturday. And I will see you guys on Sunday. Whatever. It is what it is. I love you guys. Peace.